Hey there, so what I want to do today is I want to upgrade this B-Link Sur 5 Max with 32 gigabytes of RAM. It currently has 16. Now the reason I'm upgrading it is actually for another project where I'm going to be using this as a part of a server cluster. But what I am curious to see is if the upgrade from 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 will give us an, any kind of meaningful uplift in terms of gaming performance. Again, I'm not really going to be doing this upgrade for gaming, but I am curious to see if it's going to make any kind of a difference. We're going to take a look at some modern games and a few older games just to see what the numbers actually end up being like. Okay, so I just finished all the testing with 16 gigabytes of memory, so now I'm going to upgrade this thing to 32 gigabytes. Thankfully, this B-Link system makes it extremely easy. We're going to be putting in this 32 gigabyte kit, and of course, it is extremely easy to get in here. All you have to do is unscrew these four screws and then use the pull tab. Of course, once you actually use the pull tab, you can see here that we have the shroud that holds the SATA SSD. This is really easy to get out. All you have to do is go for two screws on the sides and then one in the middle. They're kind of recessed in there, so they're a little bit of a pain to get a grip on, but once you're in there, you're able to just pull it out. I'll tell you one thing, using a screwdriver with a magnetic tip is pretty much essential. I'll link this iFixit kit that I use down below. Trust me, it makes life so much easier. Now that you get the ones that are on the sides, there is this middle one right here that is really easily visible, so you won't miss this one. You don't need to go for the ones on the opposite corners. Those are actually holding down the motherboard to the case itself. And we could just easily pop this thing off. Careful while pulling it up though, because there are some cables on the other side. As you can see here, it is a fan cable and the SATA cable. Specifically the SATA one you want to be a little careful with because you can damage that and those SATA ribbons are a bit of a pain to try to replace. But thankfully we do have easy access to the RAM here. So I'll just pop out the old sticks from here. And just like that, we can just start putting in the new sticks. Of course, if you wanted to upgrade your SSD, you can do that while you're in here. Personally, I'm not going to be doing that. I already have more than enough storage in here. And we can pretty much just seal it back up and we're good to go. Okay, so now that we have the RAM upgraded, let's take a look at the comparison performance numbers. So first up, I wanted to try out the biggest AAA title to have come out this year somehow. We have Black Myth Wukong running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR with a 67% render resolution target being upscaled, and we do have frame generation on. And what ended up happening here on both systems is we end up seeing pretty minuscule performance gains to the point where it's within margin of error realistically speaking you're not going to notice a difference between these two in terms of overall gaming performance and though we do see noticeably higher ram utilization on the 32 gigabyte kit it's clearly not translating to any performance uplift at all so the next game that I took a look at was Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and here we're running with the low in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR at the quality preset. It's the same exact situation where the performance is pretty much identical. After multiple runs, there is a noticeable trend of the 32 gigabyte kit giving about a one FPS difference, but that's not going to mean anything. When your FPS is like this, it doesn't mean anything at all. So there's absolutely no difference in this title either. I also checked out Eternal running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR with the performance preset here and again performance almost identical while there is a consistent trend of a gain it's not any gain that is going to lead to any noticeable improvement in your overall gaming experience of course Assassin's Creed Mirage continues this trend where we don't really see any difference overall in terms of performance performance it's just minuscule gains that really aren't going to make the upgrade itself worthwhile so if this ends up being the case with all these titles then is 32 gigabytes worth it or not well hold on we are comparing these titles with the exact same graphics settings just to see if there's any performance difference whatsoever there is another aspect of 32 gigabytes of ram that we're not talking about here see one of the most common issues with using an apu for gaming is that you run into this type of warning a lot the low VRAM warning. This is usually because of the fact that APUs by default tend to come with a allocated amount of VRAM that is usually around 512 megabytes to sometimes coming pre-configured all the way up to four. But when you have a system with only 16 gigabytes of RAM, when you allocate 
4 gigabytes exclusively to the iGPU, that makes a pretty noticeable difference. So when you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, you could do something in the BIOS, like going here to the AMD CBS, going down to NBIO. And then from here, you can pretty much go to the graphics configuration and set as much VRAM allocation as you want. With 32 gigabytes, you could freely go all the way up to 16 gigabytes if you wanted to, and you'd still have a full 16 gigabytes dedicated exclusively to the system. And that's not 16 gigabytes that also has to have some of that shared with the iGPU. So the system gets the full 16 gigabytes as opposed to most people that have systems with 16 gigabytes of RAM where a lot of the times you have far less than that because you have to allocate some to your iGPU. So you might be looking at a system with only 11 gigabytes of available RAM. But here you can see in the task manager that we do actually have 16 gigabytes of RAM allocated to the system and 16 gigabytes allocated to the iGPU. So both should be more than fed enough for pretty much any scenario and if we jump back into far cry 6 we can go here into the options menu and we can see that yep we do have the full 16 gigabytes allocated of vram so you could actually turn on the hd textures on here you can pretty much go crazy with all that keep in mind though that the gpu itself is just not all that powerful but what this does let you do is essentially turn up the textures in older titles to ridiculous levels and not ever have to worry about running into any kind of vram situation even with a lot of modern titles you can turn it up so keep in mind that the way that a lot of modern game engines will do textures it does come with some performance impact but it usually doesn't tend to be all that bad if it affected the gameplay enough for the game to be unplayable chances are the game was already unplayable to begin with and actually jumping into the game here you can see it running with the lowest in-game graphics settings though we do have the textures set to the highest possible and i mean this ends up looking pretty great while also giving us decent levels of performance we're looking at just a slightly above 30 fps average for everything in general it's playable enough it's not spectacular but visually it actually looks pretty great we are of course using fsr but it's fsr at the ultra quality setting but because it is fsr 1.0 it is having more of an effect on on the visuals overall than FSR 2 or 3 would have, but at ultra quality, it isn't doing anything too crazy. And because of that, we're actually able to enjoy the visual quality of these higher textures, though because a lot of the post-processing effects and general detail for a lot of the geometry and stuff like that is still at a like the lowest possible setting. It doesn't exactly look perfect, but honestly, a lot of these shots still look absolutely great. And while you're actually playing the game, you're not really gonna sit there and think man i really wish i could just see a little bit more detail on this gun at least for me i didn't think about it at all and keep in mind that this upgrade to 32 gigabytes of ram is not one that i did for gaming if you're someone that is using this system exclusively for gaming i think you could ride out 16 gigabytes for a little bit longer i do think that at the prices that 32 gigabytes are at right now you might start to consider it especially around the holiday season it might be a nice little upgrade to do for your system so that you could just get a little bit more longevity out of it i do think that if you already have a system and it's something that's running on vega if you can wait out just one more generation just one more generation where these new h AI series of APUs start to come down in price to like reasonable levels, that's when the upgrade is really going to be worth it for you. Now, if you don't have a mini PC and you're in the market for it right now, the prices that you can get systems with the 780M are really, really attractive. Again, if you can hold out, do it. But if you are really interested in a system, the difference between the 780M and the 890M is a lot less drastic than the difference between something like the Radeon 7 or the Radeon 8 based off of Vega and the 890M. So if you get a good deal on a system right now with the 780M, you're really not going to find a system with an 890M having a better deal than that for at least another year to year and a half. But as you saw here for pure gaming right now, you don't really need to move away from 16 gigabytes. I do recommend doing the upgrade just because it makes the overall experience of using Windows significantly better. It's not a necessary upgrade right now. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.